morning friends. It is the actual day that this video is going to be posted. Somewhere around 5 a.m. I'm guessing. Uh, Coach Vic tells me I'm crazy. Uh, get up this early. It's important to me, I guess just because of the way I'm wired, that you get your video at 8 o'clock on Friday morning. So I'm doing everything I can to make that happen. Uh, we had a lot of tornadic activity in the area last night. We are safe. Our home is safe and uh, we are blessed and we are grateful. Um, I hope to go out today maybe and uh, assess some of the damage in the area. Uh, maybe let you see some of that. Um, just depends on, on what, we're, what we're doing. Uh, whether it's going to be if we have neighbors or friends that need help. We'll help in lieu of uh, taking a photo op. Just want to let you know the video is going to be a little bit long today. Uh, probably with the intro and the close out. 50 minutes probably. Uh, the rider's rides will be somewhere and I don't know exactly where. I'll put it, <laughs> I'll put it in the description of the video uh, when the rider's rides will begin because the video is so long and you may not want to watch uh, 45 minutes of an install if you're not really interested in that. Although I will be deeply offended if you don't. No, I won't. No. Um, <laughs> so enjoy the video today. We really had a good time doing it. Hello friends, Coach Bob here today, and today uh, we're going to see if something I did good or if I did bad. If you ever looked at something on the, online and you go, man, you know, I, it looks like a good price and, and it almost looks too good to be true. And so you're reticent about ordering it. Well, I figured, man, with Amazon Prime, I'm pretty safe. I should be able to send it back if it's not right. But I'm pretty excited about what it could be. And I've got this paper right here. You're probably seeing sitting up, up under my arm. No, I'm not trying to sound like Napoleon Bonaparte. But this paper has a part number on it. And the part number on it is 219-400-839. So the other night, I couldn't sleep up about two o'clock. You know, I'm sure anyone, any of you guys over the age of 50, you understand what that is. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking and I find this, I type in this part number because it's for the armrest for Coach Vic. Well, what comes up is an Amazon page, but it doesn't say BRP on the page. It just says Can-Am Spider Armrest. And it has the picture that is on the BRP webpage. And it also has the description and the part number, the SKU number from the BRP webpage. But nowhere on this Amazon page does it say BRP. And they were 275 bucks roughly, give or take two or three bucks. It might have been 272. No tax, free shipping, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, man, it's a lot less than 360, 370, which is what I would have done locally and paid taxes on that. So I'm like, uh, man, I'm gonna order them and hopefully they're the right ones. So just a few minutes ago, the brown Santa Claus came by and lo and behold, there it is. I did look, the box, nowhere on the box does it say BRP. So this is the internet instructions that I got. I've watched, done my due diligence, looked at how to put these things on. I'm going to try to do it myself. Um, and I will be doing a video of that, hopefully here in just a few minutes. So let's see what we got. I'm going to take it inside because if I take it inside and it's wrong, I won't be able to hide my disappointment from Coach Vic. I, you know, I told her I ordered some armrests, but she probably thought I was ordering the less expensive ones. These were the ones that she wanted, if they're the right thing. So I guess we're about to find out. Again, nothing says BRP on this box. It has the name of the company that sent them. That looks like a BRP armrest to me. There's one, that's the, that's the right one. Look for any scratches or dings, that looks good. Because that was another thing, the, uh, the, 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 the business that I ordered it from had a couple of people that had received things, but parts were missing out of the boxes, boxes damaged. Wasn't sure if that was the, uh, the, the, the company they used for shipping. Two of these, that's perfect. I've done all my research. There should be another armrest and eight screws in the box. Here's the other armrest. Let's look at it. 
Looks like a BRP armrest. No flaws, looks great. Oh. Eight screws, has some uh, French written on there and the passenger armrest. Has a proper, proper SKU number, looks great. And lo and behold, BRP. Amen. Well, looks like I got the armrest, so uh, we're gonna do an install today. Woohoo! All right, let's get this garage squared away so we can do some work. Now, one of the reasons I'm making this video is not because you can't find the information out there already. The information is available online. Uh, there's a guy, uh, I'll put links uh, to both of them uh, down below. I'm sure if you're a Can-Am person, you've been one for any, any period of time. Of course, you know about the Smokes Vlogs. Um, he is a real mechanic. I'm not. So I figured it'd be a nice comparison to see how a professional does it and then see how I do it. Um, I'm like a Rodney Dangerfield of, you know, working on stuff. I get no respect. And the other guy uh, has a web page called, or a YouTube channel called, It's Yours Own It. Um, dude is super sharp. Uh, he just did a big tour. Uh, check his channel out. Uh, sub to his channel, man. I know he, he would appreciate it. It's always good to get the get that response, you know, to let you know that all your work's not in vain. Um, but he is way more sharp than I am when it comes to this stuff, too. He, he bought the, uh, the Buds program for his computer and all that stuff. So he's really on it. So go to go check out his stuff. There will be a link down below. And if I can put a card up here, I'll do that as well. Um, but without further ado, let's start disassembling this thing. I've never done it before. I will, I will scroll up here what tools you will need to do this job. And it will be all inclusive. Everything that I use, I will be very diligent about showing you what I use, uh, any mistakes, any hassles, headaches, heartaches, I'll share all my experiences all along the way as a novice, so maybe when you do yours as a novice, you won't be afraid. This is something that I like to do. I have a stand for my iPad. I will bring up any videos that, I have ex that I've looked at that might help me if I run into a, a bump in the road and I can, I can always revert back to that video. I've got my sheet, everything's printed up. So everything's done, I'm ready to go. So I know, for example, I'm gonna need a Torx 20, I'm gonna need a Torx 30, I know I'm gonna need a seven millimeter wrench, I know I'm gonna need an eight millimeter wrench, and I know I'm going to need um, possibly a screwdriver, and I know I will need some wire cutters to cut a tie over the wires over here near the antenna. I've observed and a quarter inch drill bit. I've got all of that ready to go. So if there's more, I will obviously put it, but that's just from memory. So could I forget something? Yeah, but I'll make sure that we get all that squared away for you. Now I have verified that these are 20s. That's a 20, a 20, and a 20. So those three there go into your backrest. These are 30s. Those uh, remove the speaker pods. There's two of the, there's three of those on each side. One, two, three. One, two, three. And the twenties, there's three of them. One, two, three. And then these just have to be loosened. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the seat. We're not gonna deal with the speaker pods until we get that plastic piece out to get this uh, big giant plastic piece off of here. All right, so the uh, the three twenties all came out. They're the, the uh, Torx twenties. You can see that they used to be the um, the the nut that was stuck in there these are more self-tapping type things so uh, but i still i used a hand tool i've got you know impact drivers and all that stuff i, I you know I, I joke about not being handy but I, i've done quite a bit of things i used to build jeeps so i'm using hand tools now what i will do is i will get i'm going to walk inside right now and i am getting ziploc bags and what i'll do is I'll take the Ziploc bag that has the parts for that particular section. Hey coach. How you doing? Working on your armrests. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> and I will write, for example, seat 
on, on this bag. And then when I pull the seat off, I'll take those screws, put them in this bag. There, like I said, these three were removed. These two here, you just loosen up and it slides out. It's on a slide. You can see it's all loose already. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those three screws in this bag and lift that seat off. Just like that. There's where your three screws were, hand tight. And also it's giving me an opportunity to get some of that sand and mess from back there. So now I'll just set this with these screws and uh, just set them over here out of the way. I'm approaching this, I'm not gonna lie, with a, with a small amount of fear and apprehension. This is where they talk about breaking stuff. Uh, these tabs right here, Sean Smokes talks about breaking these off. There's little tabs in here that hold these Torx 30s on there. So these two Thor Torx 30s have to come out. These four Torx 30s come out. And those two Torx 30s come out. You'll see that these won't have washers on them because they're not, they can't damage paint. These will have washers on them. As far as length, I'll let you know. We'll see what we got. Again, I'm using hand tools. I could use my impact gun for the sake of time to make it faster, but I just really want to take my time and I know that some of these things I don't want to stress about, you know, pushing a nut or something out the, out the front side and damaging something. So I'm, I'm not putting any pressure on this as I remove it. And this is the first time I've taken this, this section of this thing apart. This is not the first time it's been taken apart. Obviously the dealer uh, up in Columbus but one with a washer on the bag. These screws are probably all the same size. Let's take these four out and see what it got. The washers go on the paint, the non-washers go on the black plastic. I'm just gonna call this body and bags. Same size, the only difference is some have washers that go on the paint and the ones without the washers go into the black plastic. This is where it gets scary um, for me. I know there are two tabs here where you have to lift up and I'm very reticent about doing that. This piece here has to come out and then that has to come up and back. See those tabs right there? Those tabs have to go up and over and you don't want to tilt it back because if you do, you'll snap that tab off right there. That really, honestly, was not near as bad as I was anticipating. Everyone talks about the fear of that, and I think maybe that's the key, is approach it with a little bit of fear. And if you do, you'll be less prone to break it. Now these speaker pods have to come off. I'm looking, and I know there are three screws here. So let's do that. We're gonna start with the port side. These were the ones they were saying, when you take them out, don't push them. There's a, there's a nut that's locked into a catch, a plastic catch, and you don't want to force that nut off and break it and have it drop down inside something. So just set your Torx inside the, the screw like that right there. And as you turn it, let it just move itself out without pressing it. There's three, I have my little light in here because everything's black in here and I can't see crap. It may seem that I kind of know what I'm doing. I will tell you that I have watched the videos from Sean Smokes and if it's yours, own it. I ordered these Thursday night. Today is Monday. I was supposed to do a Fitness Quest video this morning. We had a power outage, so I couldn't do it. But I've watched those videos, both of them, at least once a day. So I feel like I've observed someone do it. Just make sure, yep, yep, yep. So let's see what we've got here. Comes right out. And lo and behold, two speaker wires. Mm, my goodness. 
Tell you right now, I don't consider myself having weak hands. Those things are on there. If I can get these pliers on them to just pull straight back, this thing is on here. These are the kinds of things that you never really anticipate happening. They just do. And got it. Man, whoo, that thing was on there, man. My goodness, that was on there. Got it. Man. I'm sure that wire looks intact, and it does, but I will tell you, man. We'll take this inside, sit at the kitchen table, and do some disassembly. All right, so we have the speaker pod here. We've got a Torx 20 there, a Torx 20 there. There's two of them. Should be another couple over here. There's one there. So I'm counting three right now, but I know there's more than that. Um, it will unfold. You can see these are the tabs that you have to pull back in that direction. And you have to get this lip off before you pull that back. And those things are pretty tight. Those are the other, your break points. The instructions from BRP are a little, they leave a little to be desired, but they work. If that's all I had, I could do it that way. Um, I preferred the method of going online and looking at other people do it. I am a visual learner. The screws are exactly the same size. I am going to revert to my instruction sheet. This is the uh, maneuver that I was dreading. Um, we'll see how bad it is. This is the part where you have to get this lip over the front side and then slide it back. Um, so when I have professionals saying that it's a chore, then uh, it makes me a little apprehensive. There it goes. All right. Really wasn't as bad as I thought. Um, you just want to be careful. You don't want to yank it back. I think as long as you're, you're pushing it in your direction, I think you'll be fine. Um, Cause I was really leery of that. They were saying this little notch right here is very critical about when you reassemble it, it won't go back in. It'll be sitting up too high. Uh, your speaker pod, uh, won't, won't go back on. Once you get this done, then you have to take the uh, speaker out. All right. And I can tell you, as soon as it came loose, it was ready to, just, it was ready to fall out there. And here's the thing, they had some little white lithium grease on there, on those speaker uh, clips, and it was still that tight, man. That's crazy that it could be that tight. This right here, um, there are washers, I know, with these speakers. So be careful not to lose them. You've got magnets on the back of the speakers. Obviously, that will pull all that to it. Your speaker and the washer is behind your speaker, and then the screw goes in. That's how that is. That's how that's lined up. It's an attached little piece that these things thread into, so you don't have to worry about it. There again, don't press in. Let the pressure of the screw remove itself. That's very important. Slow is fast, fast is slow. Don't, don't, don't get in a hurry. Now I am paying attention to note that this speaker, when I put it back in, will aim towards this little curly tab right there. This little curly tab, that's where these two tabs will point up in that direction. So I, I made a mental note of that. There's a little cutout for that washer right there. Right there, washer goes there. To find the four holes that I have to enlarge and remove this part of it. So you can see there, there are two screws right there that hold the armrest on there. Okay, this would be the bottom, right? Your arm would sit here. So you've got two on the bottom in the front, and then you've got one in the back there, let's see here. These that came out of the armrest, I'm putting over here. You should not have to use those again. Let's take this one out over here. There seems like there should be one over here. There's a hole there but I don't see. Ah, okay. So for this task, I did buy a brand new drill bit. I wanted it to be sharp. 
when I watched Sean Smoke's video, he simply used a quarter inch drill bit and he took his time. And that is what I'm going to do. So there's the hole. It's almost big enough. So it does try to take off on you, I will tell you. So be careful. You see that one? It's kind of close to that edge. This was the one when I watched If It's Yours, Own It. He used that, he, he was talking about how close that was. And he is absolutely right. That is a little close. I'm gonna save the best for last. So let's do this one next. Um, just like that. And now the scary one. Wish me luck. Here we go. Man, that is close. He was right. Ooh, that's close. Just go nice and easy with it. Also, what you have to do, and we're going to go outside and mock this up here in a moment. Um, when this goes on, slides in like this. There's a piece that has to slip in here, and that has to be done, by the way, before you screw this armrest on. There's a left and a right side to this left hand. So I am going to verify, though, that the left hand looks proper before I do anything. And yes, it does. So it will sit like that, just like that. And then that gives that support when your backrest presses against it. Coach Vic is gonna absolutely love that. She's gonna love that. The first time I watched somebody do this, I think it was on the Smokes vlogs when I watched him do it. And I thought, I am not gonna do that. I'm just not gonna do it. I, I'm not gonna take that much of it apart. I'm not gonna drill holes in it. Well, when I found these at the price I did, and it, it seems to me that a lot of times I find myself, no offense to anyone, being disappointed, feeling like I could have done a better job. I just decided to do it myself, and here I am. So hopefully all this works out well. I believe it will. I just have to figure out which one the long ones go in. The 20s, that would be the long ones, go in the back, which makes sense because if you had a fulcrum, you press down on it, it's gonna be more pressure on the back than in the center. So the center, you're gonna have your two short screws. On the back, you're gonna have your two long screws. One of the things that I use a lot, and people make fun of me, it's from old day two strokes and Harleys and all that. I put a small mount of blue Loctite on everything. It's just enough, if there's a vibration in there, it keeps it from vibrating out. And I don't think, I am not utilizing a torque wrench. You can, if you want, uh, three and a half Newton meters or 31 inch pounds, not foot pounds. I saw a guy online uh, chase on two wheels. He was gonna replace or retorque a bunch of bolts in his Ducati. And when he did, he did not realize there was a difference in a foot pound and an inch pound. And guess what? He broke every bolt off on his motorcycle. And I was like, what are you doing, man? I couldn't stop him, but I wanted to. What I do with everything is uh, I always start things with my fingers. That way I'm ensured two things. One, not to cross thread, which is very important. I wanna make sure that those threads are not boogered up. And also it allows me not to over snug anything down um, to make sure that everything lines up. Because if you start tightening things down, you'll have one, the last one won't line up. That's just how it works. I've been really excited about getting these in, and I, I'm really excited that Coach Vic will be able to use these things because I really think it's gonna make her life better back there. I don't think she realizes how stressed out I've been worrying that these were the wrong ones. And that was the one that we said looked thin. Take your time on that one. Really, really take your time on it. There's only four of these. They were saying if you had a ball in Torx wrench, it would be easier. I agree, it would be much easier. Uh, I don't have one. Uh, I looked for one yesterday. I uh, could not find one in the store that I was in, so. Feels solid as a rock, I like it, okay. And remember, if you lose your screws, they're probably stuck to your magnet. Not that I would ever lose anything. But if I were going to, that would be a good spot for them. Ball end, and a 
doesn't fall off. Look at that. Man, that made my life a little bit easier, huh? Ever so gently, speaker fell right in there just like it's supposed to. Speaker reinstalled. So now we know that the speaker went in next to the grill cover. This was the piece they were talking about was the issue. It really is a jigsaw puzzle. And if you like that kind of stuff, and I don't, if you like that kind of stuff, you'll, uh, you'll probably enjoy this. And all of these screws, by the way, were the same size. Uh, am I paranoid as heck about putting them back in? Yes, I am. But the one screw here, all that's left is the body piece. Remember, this had three screws in it. One, two, three, okay? So getting it off was not too horrible. Getting it on hopefully won't be any worse. Look at that curve. It's gonna be like that. That's the lip that has to go to the back. So these pieces, you see you've got a slot here, a slot there, a slot there. And those three slots is how that goes in. They go into that slot, and as you pull it towards you, now you just have to get this over the end. Much easier to put on than to take off. And I would venture to say, the next time taking it off won't be near as big a chore. Of course, I find things interesting as others do. Let's go put it on the spider. See how she looks. I'm going to check the speaker before I button everything up. But again, before I button anything up ever, 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 I always make sure that it's working. <laughs> rubber piece fits in that groove and that's what your your speaker wire runs through so onward and upward here we go when it goes in right you'll know all right i'm beginning the starboard side so i've got to take these these three out okay so i got the 330 uh torx 30 screws out of the inside so the pod's loose i'm going to disconnect the antenna and I'm told the big thing is just to hope that somebody didn't put it on too tight. Uh, it should just screw off. It's an eight, that's a seven millimeter bolt. And I gotta cut that little, little tie there. The speaker wires, take those off. And then I'll figure out how to get that antenna off when I get inside. See how tight these bad boys are. Let me tell you about the washer on this one, so don't there's little holes in here. I don't know if they go all the way through. I would just be cautious about not dropping anything. I always put my washer and my nut back on now. That way I can't lose them, theoretically. <laughs> Let's take this eight out. Okay. Pop it right back in the hole where it goes. The twist tie has to be cut because it's all secured to the uh, to the pod. I always get a little little reticent about you know not you don't want to cut anything, so I'm able to get in there. There we go. Okay. I have to unhook the speaker. These things are on here so tight it is unbelievable. I will say that I have never had that much trouble getting a speaker wire off. There we go. It looks like I'm in a new location. Coach Vic is in there cooking, so. Got all my stuff here. Yeah. The antenna, getting this thing off was a booger bear. I went on to a Le Monster's webpage. I was trying to unscrew it and it would not unscrew for nothing. And what he recommended is twisting like you're tightening because there's a spring inside here. Twist like you're tightening and pull and eventually it will let loose. Let me tell you, it was a job. Um, it was tough, but it, it, it comes off, but it, you're wondering, am I getting anywhere? Uh, I was certainly beginning to wonder if I was getting anywhere. And then I noticed a little play starting to develop in it, and there it was. So let's take this little body panel off here. Keep a screw count here. Two, three. I think I have to pull the little body panel off to get that last one. I think that's what I did last time is I said, hey, there's an extra. Or where did that come from? Okay, so that just pops out and then pushes back working. Well, that didn't do it. Well, it went back. Okay, so I did not remove any more screws. Um, I simply just worked with it. And this is the uh, 
that antenna shaft. So you can see, look at this antenna shaft, this just slides on that antenna shaft, right? And, and it drives on there. It's just pressure hold, holding it on there. So there, it's not threaded. So when you're putting it, Hello. Hey. Hey, how you doing? I'm okay. You home? I mean, any day I said I'd come in today or any night. So you're ready to go to the beauty shop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that the governor's opened things up, though. That's that's good. I'm gonna tell you again. Somebody might hear me. Well, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll figure it out. No problem. But we'll do it one day when you're in the house and not drill a nose. All right. Sounds good, mom. All right. Well, I love you. Okay. Love you too. All right. See you. All right, so I've enlarged the three holes that don't make me nervous. That's this one, this one, and da -da 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 -da. where is it, where is it, where is it? Won't make me nervous. That one there, you see how close to the edge that is? That is very disconcerting to me, and I don't like it, but I know it's got to be done. And so, ah. Man, I tell you. <laughs> that one's unnerving. You know how it is when you get to doing stuff, phone rings and things start happening. And it always makes me a little antsy because I, you know, I seem to lose my, my train of thought somewhat. Uh, no worse for the wear. So here we are. What I did notice is this is the right hand side, but when you do it, it's upside down. The RH is upside down and that kind of shook me up a little bit, but it can only go one way. So I would say test foot it, test fit it, and make sure that it's right. But with me, the left and the right hand side, we're the left and the right hand side. It's just the letters L and the letter R were upside down. Remember my paranoia about things coming loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and, because of the type of bolts that these are, I'm gonna put a little, just a smidgen of blue. What's the back one? If you remember, the long screws go in the back because that's where more pressure goes. Again, these original screws were Torx 20s, now they're the 30s. Um, very, very loose. Like a long neck goose. This last hole on the other one and this one, and that's the one that's very close to the edge. Um, you do have to kind of work with it. Uh, there's always one, and this is the one. So um, it was that way on both sides. But that's the one that wants to be a little cantankerous. I won't bore you with the assembly of the speakers and all that stuff for right now. I'm gonna turn the camera off while I put the speaker back in and stuff. You've seen it on the other side, and I will tell you, it is absolutely identical. There is no other bolts you have to take off in association with that antenna. So you just take the antenna off and you work around that. And that's that block right there, is that antenna block. That's it, so not a real problem. All right, so really it was just a matter of just putting those screws back in that were already taken out. Nothing complex at all on that part. Armrest feels good and solid. Put this big, big bad boy on. There's the lip. That lip has to go over first, and you can see, actually it goes over last in these three things. There's three notches, a notch here, a notch there, and a notch there. That will, each one of those goes into a notch. It's on a lot easier than it comes off. There it goes. You just have to feel it with your hand in there. You can't see that last little tab on this side. Now to put these three screws in, and then this is assembled. Really, the job is not hard. You can say what they want. It, it, the plastic part, it, 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 it is nerving. But I don't think that it's difficult, and I don't think it's something that you should be afraid to do. If you were to ask me, would I do it again, or would I help if you were here, and you needed help doing yours, I would not be afraid to, to help you do yours, and I wouldn't be worried about breaking it, knowing that, you, of course, you can always break something, but the dealer can break something too. But it, it is plastic. You know, there is always a certain amount of nervousness and fear associated with these things, but I don't really believe that it's a huge issue. If you were to ask me how long this took me, it took me longer, I think, because of the moving of cameras and that sort of thing. Hour and a half to two hours um, is what it would be, just realistically. All right, so you're looking down uh, at the thing. What I've done is I have fed this twist tie through there. 
Um, if you'll recall, they were a seven and an eight. Let's get his antenna hooked back up and put this bad boy back on here because I'm ready to see what it looks like. Because that little piece I was talking about kind of sits in the slot like that. Um, kind of cool. Actually, that's actually not a bad idea there, BRP. You got one thing right. Even if your lefts and your rights are upside down. <laughs> So we're gonna run this bad boy under these speaker wires. This little grounding strip here went to there. And this was the eight. So I should have the eight on there. Okay, so the eight is on there. Now, the seven. Take this off. Remember I had a little washer that went on top of this. So I don't wanna drop the bolt. It's a little bitty washer. Put that nut on there. Snug that baby up. I'm gonna take all these wires here, run them in here. And you can see where the pinch was, where it was, where it ran through the last time. So we're gonna run up to that same pinch point right there, but exactly like it was. Get them all lined up as we, as everything comes together. Cut that excess off. There we go. Wires all neatly put in place, and the little little trenches in here, and that sort of thing. Hook up my speaker wires, got to do, and check the speaker. Remember, like I did last time. So we got the speaker hooked up, my center in place. Turn it on, make sure she's working. <laughs> Perfect song. <laughs> All right, so speaker working. I put in those three three bolts that hold them in. It's just those three screws on the side. And what I understand, you kind of center this thing up, work in one side first, being ever so patient. And that went right in. That was too easy. I don't like it when it goes that easy because that means it got to have done something wrong. <laughs> Press it down, double checking back here. And of course that came off. So we've got to redo that. So let's work it with our fingers again while holding this back here. There we go. Perfect. Everything's lined up. Remember the uh, screws that have washers on them go in the paint. The screws without the washers go into the black plastic. And that way you don't spin a screw head on your paint. Unless you're the BRP guy that did the work on mine. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Not really. Beautiful. Tabs, you can see the tabs when you're looking at it. And hold it with your hand, you'll be able to see them very, very easy. Okay. Next up, seat and screws. All right, there's three that go in through the back, coming into the seat, and then these two that screw down on the top to hold it in place. They're all Torx 20s, so just to make it real clear, the tools you will need, Torx 20, Torx 30, seven millimeter socket, eight millimeter socket, pair of wire cutters for cutting your wire tie, your, your twist tie, and make sure that you have another tie to replace that one. Okay, very nice. Let's get these put in. Remember, don't press on any of the things that are going in. Let the screw pull itself in, don't push it in. And even if you're not using a captured nut, it's still just a good technique to do that. So just give it a good hand tight. Like I said these are plastic, they're almost like a self-tapping screw. Pretty easy in, pretty easy out, but they, they should stay. And I guess if they fall, they're not going anywhere, they're falling into your uh, saddlebag. So. As I work on things, I decide what I'm gonna carry. Like if I go on a trip, I will definitely carry Torx 20s and 30s. I will definitely have that. Have a few sockets and that sort of thing. 
which I never, I, you don't take these, remember you don't take these two top ones out, they're just in a slot. Alright. Oh, I just finished buttoning it up. Oh, both sides? Yeah, it's done. Oh, that was fast. Oh, yeah. It wasn't bad. Mmm, very nice. Oh, yeah, totally out of the way. Good. This very should good. work beautifully for you, man. Um, and they look so good. I mean, they just really... They do. They look good. Really do. You like it? I like it way better. Way, these should have come on it. They should have. Yeah. Throw me on them. See how it feels. Alright. Maiden run. We're going to see. Get Coach Vic on here. Oh, you're recording me? And uh, oh, awful. She looks awful. She was just telling me that she looked terrible. If you don't like the way she looks, uh, thumbs up it twice and make a comment that she looks awesome. Does look good? In fact, really? Yeah, write awesome, like capital A W for like for awful, but then write the word some, all some. That way it's like code. Ha! Hoorah! Our master great. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing that, that, you know, when I look at the directions and all this, I always worry, you know, because it is plastic in here, you worry about pressing down and it, and it breaking or ripping out back here. Um, BRP supposedly has done their, uh, done their due diligence. So, you know, um, you can't use them to pick yourself up. But you can certainly rest your arms on them. They look good. They look yeah. Good. Right. And this week on CB3's Rider Rides, we begin with George, also known as the Border Riker, coming all the way from Scotland. He lovingly has named his 2019 Riker 900 Ace Edition Ripley. Make sure you check out the Border Riker's channel. Next up, we have Dale showing off his full toy box, a man after my own heart. Any man with a Triumph and a Can-Am makes me very happy much less a triumph and two can-ams he has a nice 2009 triumph bonneville the 2018 can-am rt and for his blushing bride a 2019 f3t way to go dale keep it up baby beautiful now we have kenneth's 2010 spider rts he bought it at the end of february previously owned and he is riding that machine. Welcome to the Spider Family, Ken. So there you have it. Another episode in the books. I pray you're all safe and that life is grand for you as it is here at the humble Coach Bob and Coach Vic abode. Uh, we are very, very happy and very grateful to be well this morning. It was quite a light show last night. So thank you for the Riders Ride submissions. So until next time, go out. 
Find the motorcycle of your dreams. Ride that thing, baby. <laughs> Eat right. Take care of yourself. And remember, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Now, go seize the day, because that's what I'm doing, baby. We'll see you soon. Oh, the nectar of the gods. <laughs>